issue right over here, so you guys want to watch out. It's a little bit to the... Like, it was found like some... Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. No, just okay. 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 material over here or what have you. Yeah, right. there was a big push. Look, so we're going to be going through some different uh, land ownership. Probably about 90% of it is parks. We do have some land trust property in here too, uh, mainly the fish ramp as we as we go farther along. And again, we're going to be working kind of on dual tracks here, both to the state side of FEMA recovery and, and on the county side too. Cal Fire has been outstanding working with us in the rehab side of it. But, you know, Jones Bar is always, obviously you guys, if from everybody here, know it's been here forever, but it's never been, truly been a designated trail within the system. So that's why we're looking to fold that into a future project so we can actually contour it to make it more sustainable for the future. You know, we've, uh, you know, in Western Nevada County, we, we fixed a bridge. We got the first solar park in the system. We saved the park system by keeping them not closing down. This is our new focus, this bridge. I mean, this, this trail, right? So. Could be the new thing that we partner up on. We've learned some great stuff. That's why all you folks are here today is so we can kind of learn from this, make it better. That's what we do. So it's such a nice overlook. Yeah. But look at that. Get more signs like that, made though. Yeah, those last, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, my name is Alden Olmsted, and uh, my dad, John Olmsted, built this Independence Trail. Obviously, he didn't build it back in the 1800s. It was the Excelsior Gold Mining Flume. Um, but dad, one of his favorite words was repurpose. So he repurposed this trail to become the, uh, the first, I believe it's the first ADA wheelchair accessible, ADA approved trail in the United States when, um, when he finished it. So he found it, he put down, you know, a hundred bucks, went into escrow, called friends, got uh, support, and then when he found it in complete disrepair and, you know, not blackened like this, but complete disrepair, he spent the next, I want to say, six to eight years of his life cleaning it up, restoring it, and making it into a beautiful, um, beautiful wheelchair trail that people in the area and beyond have enjoyed for, for years. And what are your thoughts on rebuilding? Are you fairly optimistic that that's, that's going to be something that we can make happen? Yeah, I mean, Dad, as many people know, was a one-man crew for too much of his life. And he was able to get community groups when he built the trail, but then maintaining was always a challenge. So there was always scotch broom to be pulled, and there was always, um, you know, wooden parts to be recovered. I know I went down there a few years ago and still found some flattened coffee cans that he had hammered to patch parts of the zigzag that went down to the, to the creek. So, you know, to have this community effort not in six months, but right now, like just days after the fire, is pretty incredible. So I'm actually really encouraged more than I thought uh, coming up here and seeing that everyone, state parks, FEMA, Bear Ubel Land Trust, Sequoia Challenge, um, CAL FIRE, I think mean, everyone's feels like rallying and, um, and yeah, let's, let's get it rebuilt as soon as possible so that next spring we can, we can be, you know, looking at what plants are regrowing and um, I don't assume it'll be rebuilt by then, but I'm assuming we'll be well on our way. So yeah, I'm, I'm very encouraged. But um, I'm, I'm really appreciative of everyone that came out today, Matt, starting with Matt Green, Cal Fire, I mean the work that they have done to, like I said, to see that everyone's on the same page at the very beginning is not, I haven't, I've never seen that before in the history of the Independence Trail, um, since, since it got built, probably. It was the last time that I think we had this much community effort at the same time. So I think, I think uh, it's all positive looking forward for the Independence Trail. Is there anything else important that you think the community needs to know? I mean, it's, it's not a place to visit right now. It's just not. So, you know, I have a rebellious streak. My dad had a rebellious streak. This is not the time to test. Cal Fire is working hard. They're still finishing up. They're still clearing it. So it's even just safe for them. State Parks is working. People are working to get FEMA funds. This is just not the place to distract the workers' efforts on rescuing you from sliding down a hillside or something. Um, there's plenty of gorgeous places in California within five minutes of here, an hour of here, two hours of here. This is not the place to be right now. So please respect 
um, I would say, yeah, please respect the firefighters, the police, the law enforcement, and stay off the trail until you're told otherwise. Sure. My name is Erica Seward. I'm the co-executive director with Bear Yuba Land Trust. And for those that don't know, Bear Yuba Land Trust, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. We've been in this community for 30 years, and within that time, we've protected 15,000 acres of land in the Bear and Yuba River watersheds and have built and maintained 45 plus miles of trails that also include six public preserves. So what is your connection with uh, the Independence Trail? Sure, so the Independence Trail, um, the land trust back in 2012, we were gifted land, the Sequoia uh, Challenge um, from John Olmsted and his foundation. And through that, we have been managing as a public preserve 207 acres. So that's seven parcels that's inter interspersed with California State Parks lands. and. Within that is the Independence Trail. There's an east section and a west section, and the west section, including the iconic ramp and flumes, is what we've been maintaining over the course of the past eight years. And uh, what can you tell us about um, what your reaction was to being out there and seeing the damage today? Right, because we were there today. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, like many people in the public, um, we were first sort of alerted through images that we were seeing um, through social media and then also through our partnership with state parks and we've been in close communication with them. But until you actually get onto the land, you really don't quite understand um, uh, the, the extent of the damage. And so we went out today touring with NC Media as well as um, partners in our uh, collaborative efforts to rebuild. So that's uh, including State Parks, um, the county, CAL FIRE. We've had um, several different nonprofit and community stakeholders that are involved in the process as well, um, alongside the Barry Land Trust. And just getting out on um, the land today and really seeing it, it it's, <sighs> we're there for a reason. It's to document um, the loss. And so working um, to get that all accounted for and um, go through the proper procedures with FEMA to recoup some of that funding to um, support the rebuilding efforts. But then as a person who um, has enjoyed the, the trail, like many of you, um, you kind of get flashbacks and memories of just walking it and, and all of the, the moments that you've enjoyed and the stories and the um, experiences that have been shared. So it was really heartfelt and touching and um, yeah, it's sort of a balance between what needs to get done and then also just sort of mourning the loss of such a community treasure, which is um, which is hard. So for people that are looking to help out, they want to get involved in at any level, whatever that looks like, what can they do? What's the best way to help right. at the moment? So um, with the land trust, we're still kind of formulating a plan with our partners. And in, in the short term, um, there is uh, a page that you can go to at BYLT.org. Uh, slash support um, slash donate I think it is um, you might want to edit that out and go back but it's bylt.org you can go and click on the donate button and then there is a button um, dedicated to Independence Trail and we've already seen an outpouring of support um, folks are also raising their hand to say when you're ready to uh, rebuild put my name on the list we also have uh, people donating supplies like timber and, and other materials that we're going to need or services um, like surveying the land and things of that nature. So, um, you know, raise your hand if you want to help out. It really is going to be a community-wide effort. And then on October 16th, we're going to be hosting our open spaces and wild places um, virtual uh, gala and conservation awards. And it's going to be right here at um, NC Media and, and the studio there. And we'll have live entertainment and online auction. And then there will be a fund to need and tribute to the Independence Trail. So folks can tend tune in from 6 to 7.30 on, on that day. And we'll have it on Facebook and YouTube and wherever else we're posting it live uh, for people to contribute and um, we'll likely have some special appearances and fun fun things to look forward to so 